The first question is what percentage of tretinoin do you use? So I use the 0.05% and this is what I have always used. <laughs> and you can increase the percentage, the concentration, and you can decrease it. I choose to use a modest amount for my skin type. Uh, in my experience, this seems to work the best for me and I am driven by results. <laughs> so I want to find the product that suits my skin type and my goals the best. So without going on and on, the 0.05% is for me uh, provides the best results and I have used this over the almost 20 years of my Retin-A usage. So therefore, I'm not going to fix what isn't broken, so to speak. So it's very simple. <laughs> I just use what works for me. And it's going to be different for everyone because of skin sensitivity or um, tolerance to side effects or desired goal outcome and lifestyle, of course, how willing you are to protect vigilantly. I mean, we should all be protecting against the sun vigilantly, but uh, some people are more relaxed with that. And so you have to discuss that with your prescribing physician so that they can guide you along the course of treatment that will garner you the best results and yield the best results for you. But I use 0.5 zero five percent and that works really well for me so I'm not going to increase it and I find that I still get results with this in fact I get better and better results the longer I use retin-a and that's not exclusive to me I'm not a solitary case uh, but the longer you use topical vitamin a and specifically prescription strength topical vitamin a like tretinoin specifically tretinoin the results are cumulative so my skin now at age 39, in fact, looks better than it did at 35. It looks better than it did at 25. The results get exponentially better the longer you use this product, which is why it's my choice for uh, so-called anti-aging uh, treatment. Um, this is all I use. So you guys know <laughs> that I'm just a big advocate and proponent of this because uh, besides some a vitamin C and sun protection and a basic moisturizer. Uh, tretinoin is my tried and true. Um, that's the one I trust the most, my skin too. The second question is, what's your skin type? My skin type is, I would say, balanced. I had combination bordering on oily skin as a teenager. And then because I started using tretinoin around 21, um, I was still quite young, obviously, so my skin, after about a year or two of tretinoin usage, I will say it changed the whole, not only in appearance, but the whole chemistry of my skin, the integrity of my skin, the quality, the tone, the texture, everything changed. And I got a new face <laughs> from this product. So uh, that's why I am always banging on about it and I speak so much about it not only because I have almost 20 years of lived experience under my belt of using it, so I can speak on it in that authority, if you will, but also because I believe in this product and I have seen the wonders of this product. Also in my mother, who is over 70, and she's been using Retin-A or some form of this product on her skin for over 30 years, and that's all she does, and she looks wonderful. So uh, I have that great uh, role model to look up to, and I have that aging example to look forward to. So I would say my skin is balanced and it's neither oily nor dry. I'm not acne prone. This product, Tretinoin, in fact, at least for me, it addresses all of it. It addresses acne prevention, anti-aging, preventing the visible signs of uh, premature aging like wrinkles, lines, sagging skin, so tone, elasticity. This product addresses all of that texture. My skin is very, very smooth and therefore it's very shiny because smooth surfaces reflect the light more than bumpy or rough surfaces. So because my skin has no texture, it's more light reflective and radiant and that's what gives the skin that glow of uh, radiance, <laughs> uh, that smoothness of texture and the smoothing and softening of the lines and wrinkles and things. And I always say it, it 
it's not that it prevents aging, it delays aging. That's what I like to say, because at least in my observation and experience from both myself and the women in my life who use it, who are close to me, I can see that it definitely delays that visible aging process, which I definitely want, and I want to be able to control it in my own hand. So that's why I use tretinoin, and that's why I suggest uh, this as a uh, skincare staple. The next question is, after tretinoin, do you moisturize? I do. It depends on what my skin feels like, but I use the CeraVe PM moisturizer faithfully. I've been using this for many, many, many years. And then I really love the uh, Cetaphil Daily Advanced Relief with Shea Butter. I love that because it's very nourishing, the shea butter and the glycerin in it and the vitamin E. It's very thick and it's sort of greasy which I enjoy, and I put that on, I will go ahead and layer um, the moisturizer over it. And then I dab my castor oil around my eyes. So that's what I use to moisturize. But yes, uh, I do moisturize. Do you still need to exfoliate when using tretinoin? So tretinoin is a chemical exfoliant. It increases the cell turnover, and that's the mechanism by which Retin-A works, is that it accelerates that. Uh, peeling of the skin. So that's why people who use it get that peeling effect because you're quite literally peeling off the outermost layer of your skin to reveal that baby virgin skin, those new skin cells underneath. That's what gives the youthfulness because there's a constant resurfacing effect of your face. <laughs> so you you get a new face. Um, we all do that. Our skin sheds naturally, but Retin-A accelerates that to a hyperspeed. So you're, you're forcing that cell turnover to accelerate and thus um, getting to enjoy. Uh, well, the peeling is not so enjoyable, but that is the way that it works. So you cannot take the good without the bad. <laughs> so that's what I say. And that's why um, I say go slow and gradual and be patient. Patience is the most important thing. It doesn't happen overnight. I had to be very patient to get my new face. <laughs> but after that, the good news is, is that it's just a matter of maintenance. So uh, it's, it's, it depends on what you're willing to endure, I suppose. But I'm very disciplined in that way. So what work slash fillers have you had done? None. Uh, I've never had any plastic surgery. I've never had any fillers, Botox, injections of any kind. But uh, this is a question and a comment that I get all the time on my uh, skincare related videos and my beauty related videos. So fair enough, because I'm electing to put my face on the internet <laughs> by my own volunteering of it. So I understand that that invites comments from the viewing public. And especially because I'm speaking about these anti-aging products and what I use and what I do, um, that's a fair question. But no, I've not had anything done. And I won't ever. And this, you know, my mom and I were actually talking about this. It what turned into a very lengthy conversation about aging uh, that she and I had the other night. And she said, you know what, Jen, you should talk about this maybe. And it might ruffle some feathers and perhaps your opinion is an unpopular one and people are going to be offended, but maybe you should speak it out. So, mommy, <laughs> If people get upset, um, I'll blame it on you. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but um, yeah, I did actually write a community post about this topic, uh, but I understand that not everyone cares to read the, the community posts uh, that I write, especially because I write those in a stream of consciousness fashion, so they end up being essays uh, because that's just my personality. <laughs> I'm never... I'm never brief. Uh, brevity has never been my, one of my strengths. So if you care to read that, it's on my community page, but I will speak about it now too, since I've been asked the question. And like I said, I get this comment often. Um, the reason that I want to share my experience and what I do and what I don't do is because I see that increasingly I am representing, uh, sadly, in my opinion, so not, I'm sorry if this offends anyone, but um, it's sad to me that I represent, I seem to be representing a rapidly dying breed of women who, I'm a woman, so I'm going to speak from a woman's perspective, 
I seem to be representing a rapidly dying breed of women who elect not to have work done and not to get Botox and fillers and this, that, and the other done to their faces. Uh, there is some hypocritical element and judgmental element to this, I will admit, because I use Retin-A for anti-aging. So I'm not going to sit here on a high horse and say, no, I'm not interested in anti-aging or looking younger. Of course I am. We all are. If you claim that you're not vain, then it's to claim that you're not human because vanity exists among all of us. So uh, there's no judgment in what you choose and choose not to do. But this is what my mother and I were speaking of. And it actually all comes down to choice. To me, it, it looks a certain type of way. Again, this is just my opinion, so I'm sorry if this offends people, but I have to, well, I don't have to. I'm choosing to be outspoken about it, so I'm sharing just my opinion. Uh, those things lend to a certain appearance of the face where when people smile, they can't smile and they just, they look frozen. I want to have the full range of motion in my face and I want to be able to express. And yes, I keep a resting face so that I'm not exaggerating and I'm not encouraging that which I can prevent. So yeah, I do keep a lax facial expression. And that's also just a product of my personality, I will say, my demeanor. But I'm going to preserve my face naturally. And that's not to say that people who get injections and things like that and plastic surgery don't or can't age naturally and beautifully. But because of those artificial um, interventions, um, people end up looking a certain way. And I'll just put it that way and I'll end it there. And I guess I don't want to look that way. So that's where it's probably going to offend a lot of people. But those are my thoughts. And I'm not ever going to be uh, shy about speaking my opinion. I've never been shy in my life. And I will also say that a part of it is too because I have had and have such good female role models in my life who have aged naturally and beautifully. My grandmother, my auntie, my mom, my sister, none of them have ever gotten anything done to their faces. They have preserved instead their beauty, their own beauty, naturally and let aging take place naturally. And that's what I plan to do. When my hair starts turning gray, when my face starts falling and sagging and my wrinkles start showing, my mom said, you're going to look in the mirror, Jen, and you're going to say, thank you, beautiful face with wrinkles and lines and all of that. And I told her, I believe you, because it's going to be me. I'm going to be looking at my aged face as it is. and. I can't have that experience if I start going in and fixing things. So it's almost, a, I guess, a very selfish reason that I am choosing to do this way, topical treatment. And because I'm in control, I can start and stop this at my will. <laughs> and uh, it, those other things make me very uncomfortable. The, the thought of that happening to my face the thought of putting my face quite literally in someone else's hands, I find very disturbing. Any body modification, I'm just not, it's not in my desire. And it probably has a lot to do with the combination of things, my upbringing, my personality, my desires. <laughs> Everything is a choice and I just don't want that. Uh, I don't choose that way for myself. I don't want to alter my appearance artificially. I do use tretinoin and I swear by it and I suppose it could be argued that that is altering my appearance in an artificial way because tretinoin is a chemical prescription strength drug. It's a chemical, topical chemical. So again, I'm not, I, I don't want to, although I am judging, <laughs> any opinion is a judgment uh, and I've just shared mine but uh, that's what I wanted to say on that matter because I'm asked that so many times about my full cheeks and you know this is my face this is my natural face so if you compliment it or insult it you're insulting my natural physicality it's part of the um, occupational hazard <laughs> I suppose of being online is that I'm going to get all kinds of remarks that's on me 
uh, to grow a thick skin, no pun intended, or pun intended. That's my feeling about that. Uh, do, do you use your tretinoin every night? Uh, no. Uh, at this point, I'm in maintenance, and so it's been almost 20 years that I've been using this. In fact, I can go off of tretinoin for months at a time and then resume my treatment, and it's like nothing ever happened which is great <laughs> because I can make the product stretch, obviously, but also just I can take a vacation from it uh, at my will. And that's partly why I love this product so much. It's all in my control. Uh, I don't use it every night to answer the question. I alternate with Differin gel. Uh, this is also a vitamin A topical um, retinoid and I like this because number one it's accessible so for those who don't have access to the prescription strength uh, either for the cost or for any number of reasons I, I always recommend Differin and this is a great starter product as well this will give actually very similar results in my experience it takes a bit longer more patience <laughs> but it gives very similar results which is to say that it has acne fighting properties it keeps acne at bay it seems to tame oil for me and it keeps the surface of the skin very smooth and lustrous so i love this i'm a big proponent of this it's very cost effective too so i can alternate and i do and it really is just what strikes me i just put this on i put this on the point is, is that I don't talk about it, I just do it. I put one of these on <laughs> at night and I call it a day. I spend three to four minutes in the morning and three to four minutes in the evening doing my skincare and that's it. I don't want to be bothered with being obsessive about this. I use effective things <laughs> and that's it. I, I believe in simplicity and effectiveness, period. And I don't want to be spending 20 minutes with 10 steps in the morning and night you know, doing my skincare. It's just not my preference. Do you also use tretinoin on your eyelids? I'm aware that it can be extremely irritating for the eyes. I don't use it on my eyelids. I don't think it's recommended or, you know, particularly safe to use very close to the eyes. The closest I get is about here, where the orbital bone, that part, um, that's why I use castor oil in the, the orbital area. But as far as tretinoin goes, I don't take it any farther than about here. And uh, that's because I want to protect my eyes and I'm, I try to be judicious about that. In other words, I'm prudent with my application and I'm mindful of that. I will say though that the product overnight naturally any product you put on your face while you're sleeping it migrates to other areas and also when i'm applying tretinoin because i've been using it for so long i'm not very precious i will admit about the residual so that's to say that i do go ahead and just touch my eyes with it and my skin is like asbestos skin at this point <laughs> to tretinoin so i'm not saying that that's safe or recommended at all um, but I'm just being honest of what I do, so that's what I do. But no, I don't apply it directly to my eye area. I don't, uh, I don't think that's recommended because the eye skin is so delicate. Hello, Jennifer. You began applying tretinoin since the age of 20. What is your take if an older woman begins with tretinoin? The short and simple answer to that is just patience. Be gradual with it. And less is more. Apply as directed. Don't over apply it certainly and don't get overzealous because more will not accelerate the results. It will leave you with harsher side effects in the interim while you're treating your skin. And that might deter you from continuing the treatment, frankly, and it might discourage you from using it long enough to see the results. I always just say patience is the best thing and give it time. I see a lot of people and consistency. I will say that I see a lot of people switching up their products, which you know, do whatever you want. But the reason I don't do that is because I won't know what's working and what's not working. I've used the basic same skincare since I was about 19 or 20, and I've been caring for my skin since I was about 11. So I've just remained consistent with that simple cleansing, moisturizing, and then when I got a little bit older, treating with the Retin-A, and then sun protection. And that's it, because the consistency of that is what will actually get the most results and the best results and lifestyle, stress management, sleeping well, eating well, moving your body, making sure that you don't smoke or drink and these things. So 
it's it's all about uh, quite honestly a lot of the things I don't do <laughs> as much as it is the things I do do <laughs> but it's the consistency of it and not being all over the place and having wandering eyes and switching this product and that product every two months because then how will you know ever if something is working for you I personally I wouldn't know if something's working for me if I just keep switching out things but that's just me and since I'm the one being asked in this particular instance, I'm just going to speak from my experience. I noticed your Retin-A is gel. Have you used the cream? Yes, I've used both and I prefer the gel. In my opinion, it comes down to preference. So I prefer the gel um, delivery. Ironically, I had more dryness and more flaking with the cream. So one would think perhaps that a cream is more emollient. Well, a cream by definition is more emollient, right? Whereas the gel seems to evaporate quicker. Um, it's less viscous, but in my experience, the gel makes my skin, mm, the texture of the skin, I can't explain it, but it's better for me. More supple, more dewy looking. So I enjoy the gel more. And you, that's just trial and error thing. You can try one for six weeks and try the other for six weeks and see which one you like the best. That's the only way to find out is to see and try for yourself. So I hope the answers to these questions have been helpful for those asking because these are the most frequently asked questions across all of my skincare and tretinoin related videos. And I figured that combining the answers in one singular video might be helpful so that you can reference it. And uh, I wish you good luck and be well. Thank you as always for being here and thank you for watching. Many people requested to see pictures of me as a teenager. So I'm including a few at the end. Here I am at 15 years old and 16 years old. I'm 16 or 17 years old in this picture and 24 years old here. The next picture is my 26th birthday actually, which I celebrated in Korea. This is my sister and I in Korea together. And the last picture is my mother, her university picture.